Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. Uh, I am Mike. I am here today with Jay Shalansky and Tim. I'm not entirely sure how to say your last name. So do you want to give us a... (laughs) (laughs) Tim, who gives a crap? (laughs) Bo. (laughs) Tim Feldhaus. It's anglicized Dutch. (laughs) So it it is house. Yeah. Okay. All right. right. Anglicized because it's it's supposed to be house in Dutch. It's house in Dutch, so it was just anglicized. Okay. Hoose. Okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. I definitely, I was, I was gonna say, yeah, hoose or something like that, and I would have screwed it up. So I'm, I'm glad I actually gave you the opportunity <laughs> to correct me before I screwed it up. Um, how you doing today, guys? How's everything going? Good, real yeah. good. I uh, just real briefly, we don't have to talk about this long, very long, but uh, I went to Galaxy's Edge. Oh, at Disney World. Oh my God, that place was amazing. I uh, I was thoroughly overwhelmed the entire time I was there. But yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, very much like uh, it was interesting seeing all the full size ships, and I was just like, holy crap, this stuff is pretty giant. And if anybody out there gets a chance, you should absolutely go. Rise of the Resistance is um, is the best thing I've ever done. It's a it's an amazing ride. Best experience ever done ride wise like okay sure. you know, no no not that <laughs> not like <laughs> not in life uh uh no ride wise one of the best rides i've ever been on so really cool have you been to disney tim i've been to disneyland in california nice do they also have a galaxy's edge uh they yeah t- i think so well they didn't when i was there okay back okay. in the ye- ye olden days of like four or five years ago <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I definitely, uh, recommend it for anybody that hasn't gone, uh, you yeah. know, um, when everybody, when, whenever you feel safe from like a COVID perspective, I would recommend people go, you know, it's definitely, it's yeah. like being teleported into another world. It's really cool. Um, so yeah. So, uh, today we are going to go through, uh, we're going to have a <clears throat> short housekeeping segment. Um, Kyle's not here this week to kind of like clamp down on us. So we'll see yeah, you how can't short stop it me. actually is. Could be as long um, as I want it to be. I'm free. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, so we're going to hit some news after that. Uh, Tim is going to give us a little bit of a tournament recap uh, report on the skirmish tournament that he talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to spend, I think, a large amount of time today talking about Invader League um, because it's that time of the year again. Um, I don't know how everybody else feels about it, but this is a little bit like Christmas to me. So um, it's, this, is the, this is the fun time of the year. So uh, we are going to hold off talking about SoCal um because we do have an exclusive interview lined up with the winter winner um he couldn't make it this week uh <laughs> because his flight was delayed due yep. to what i believe is being called a bomb cyclone i don't really understand what that means but what i didn't even know about this this is new it's a big storm <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a big storm it just like has a cool name you know where's like that on the, happening on the east coast we get hurricanes apparently on the west coast they get bomb ah. cyclones it's like i don't know like west, bomb is cool west coast best coast thing i, I, I don't know <laughs> yo that cyclone is bomb dude right <laughs> yeah. um i'm I sure like that's it. not why it's actually called bomb cyclone but yeah um yeah so let's uh let's kick into housekeeping Housekeeping. All right. Yeah. Housekeeping. Uh, you know, there's something I want to bring up that you don't have on this list, Mike, as that I was thinking about uh, if you out there in podcast land haven't had a chance, uh, check out our uh, legionquickguide.com. We, we did this really cool tool uh, and it actually has, so if you're on iPhone, I believe it works the same on Android, but what you could do is you could put, we created an icon for your desktop and you can get it like almost like a mobile app now, right from the, right from the website. Uh, it's a really good tool. So if you're going to any tournament soon, um, the reason I'm bringing it up is I'm going to a tournament on the 6th. 
of November. So like, I was like, oh, I should get that tool out, you know, and, and get ready in case there's any rules questions. But yeah, check it out. Um, legionquickguide.com. It's a really cool tool we, we're working on. And uh, yeah, that, that's that. And then uh, the other thing is, as usual, uh, you can check out our other tool, Legion HQ as well. That's our list building tool, if you guys didn't know. Uh, and then if you'd like all this content and our tools and our blog and the stuff that Timbo's doing over on the blog with the other blog writers, uh, support us on Patreon. That's how we that's how we can do all this great stuff, like all these tools that we, we've built you know, for free to you guys, uh, and the, the, uh, the, uh, blog that's free to you guys. And these two podcasts, the fist trooper and scoundrels podcast is all free to you. It's, it's thanks to our Patreon subscribers. So if you want to help support all this free content, um, that's the way to do it. You also get another f- podcast for being a Patreon supporter as well. Plus some other cool stuff, uh, inside scoops on what's happening at the fifth trooper and, and all that. So it's, it's pretty cool. You want to talk about Stormtide, Mike? I do want to talk about Stormtide because uh, we have completely shipped Box 3 at this juncture, and um, I think a lot of people have gotten it, uh, which also means that um, all of the add-ons for that we've uh, put out, I'm not going to go into them because there's spoilers involved, um, yeah. have also gone out. People seem to be reacting like really enthusiastically. I'm loving it. Um, it's interesting because I actually, I wanted to bring up the bomb cyclone thing because there may be a condition card in box three that's titled hurricane. (laughs) Um, (laughs) and, uh, Wow. Yeah, way to connect uh, so, that to recent events That's, right uh, yeah 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 great. so you can Love feel it. like all of the socal uh players on their airplanes flying home um, yeah. <laughs> and uh it, from be... the safety of your own legion table <laughs> exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so uh box three is definitely the um kind of climax of the first quarter uh we are going to be uh kind of detailing probably more on our patreon but um in the in the coming weeks some advertisements based on uh quarter two the dark abyss which uh you know we were doing doing some more work on today and it <laughs> looks so cool i'm i'm <laughs> i'm so ready for everybody to see it um we definitely uh for, for those of you that aren't um super in touch with Stormtide, it is a narrative unofficial narrative legion campaign and uh, it's a monthly box that you get that tells a story. You play two missions each month and um, box four through six or quarter two is really where we were able to kind of step up our game because we uh, knew what our money looked like. We had an idea of what we could and couldn't do. Um, we had to be a little bit conservative in quarters one through three with um how or not quarters one through three boxes one through three with how, how to do things and and i think uh we've gotten our legs and i'm really excited about boxes four through six yeah and i want to i want to say this just so everybody's aware because this has come up a couple of times and I, I don't know that we've ever really said this out loud and so i, I want to make it clear uh is that we we don't we're not using in our story our narrative part of it we're not using any star wars ip so it's our own story. It's our own characters. We're taking you to a world that exists outside um, of the Star Wars universe. And we explain that in the story. And so I know that pops up every once in a while. People are always worried that like, oh, these guys are going to get shut down. It's, we're not. Everything's cool. We're not using anybody's IP. We're just we're, we're we built our own story um, and and play through using the legion rule set as our base is 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 how it works yeah um and and it but it allows you but for those of you that are you know obviously we're all huge star wars nerds right for those of you that love star wars and it's it's definitely room in there for you to build your own narrative uh with the star wars ip that you have at home uh and so it's it's very i think we did a you know, not to pat myself on the back, break my shoulder, pat my own back, but like, you know, I think we did a great job, like riding that line and, and really in this next quarter, we're really taking you into, um, our version of, of the world. And, you know, we're pulling you, transitioning you from where you've been with Star Wars Legion currently and taking you to, to our vision, uh, I should say Mike's vision and, and my uh, artistic support. Um, 
and and you know that's that's where we're heading now so i am really excited about it uh working on the art has just been a, a real treat so yeah i'm excited about it i think um uh, i can't wait for everybody to get their get their finish up box three and sink their teeth into box four because i think it's going to be really yep. exciting um yeah, I mean, we actually we spoiled this to our Patreon people, so I'm gonna actually kind of like just Uh-oh. check it out now. Um, there are new rules in Box Four for um, structures as part of your army, um, so uh, and like defensive emplacements and stuff like that. So, um, kind of yeah. fun, neat little, neat little stuff. Uh, in any case, uh, is that housekeeping? What else is on this list? Timbo's plug. Timbo's, Timbo's plug. plug. Timbo, where oh, can God. we find you, my man? Tell us now. Uh, well, of course, I'm on the uh, Fifth Trooper blog, where I do an article a month. I'm also on Twitch as Timbo8700. Um, this will be in the past once this actually goes out, but I am streaming uh, Mr. Dash is here, Mike Berry, tomorrow in his first Invader League game. So uh, if you're hearing oh, this yeah. and you haven't seen that yet, uh, the recording should be on my uh, page, as long as there's no technical difficulties. Uh, from Tuesday night onwards, and and hopefully I will have won. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and just just to be clear, it's Timbo eight seven zero zero. Yeah, yeah. So everybody can find you. Yep. Awesome. Cool. I I'm looking forward. So I do. Uh, uh, I don't know if this is narcissistic or if this is just me being like a uh, like very thorough competitive player, but I watch back all of the casts that I'm a part of because I find it, um, A, it makes me feel good. <laughs> B, um, it, uh, I find that's the best way I like learn my mistakes when I like watch it back after like letting it be like 24 or 48 hours. And I just like listen to what the cast is saying and kind of um, just like, I'm like, oh, like looking at that now, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like that was a very clear mistake. I, I think that's, I think everybody should do that. I mean, that's what, that's what they do in sports, right? Like they go, they go to the film room and they watch the game back and they go, Hey, number 23, you did that wrong. Uh, you know, so why don't you go ahead and not do that again? I think it's the same, same idea, you know? Yeah. I'm, I guess I'm a little self-conscious about it as well. So anyways, I will be <laughs> watching, watching your stream back, uh, Tim, if, if, nothing else so um, i'm looking forward to that uh, i'm a 50 right. 50 frankly i don't know <laughs> <laughs> well jay's gonna jay's gonna have to at least probably listen to it because i'm actually gonna be playing from his garage from the um, office yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um uh, we're actually uh, we can actually kind of have like a little bit of a uh talk about that i think in more detail in the invader league section because i, I want to talk about our lists and, and stuff like that because I think this season is going to be more interesting than I thought it was. Um, <laughs> but let's uh, let's kick over to the news before we get into uh, anything too crazy. Welcome to In the News. So, uh, news this week. Uh, it's a it's a really hot news week. There's no RRG update. Um, so what? Oh my god! Whoa! Right? <laughs> um, what did you say, Mike? <laughs> my understanding, though, is that Marvel Crisis Protocol um, did get an RRG update today, so maybe yeah. that's maybe that's foreshadowing that we're next. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know Marvel Crisis Protocol enough to really uh, know if it was good or whatever. But um, it's to the Marvel MCP players out there, um, have fun, I guess. Yeah uh <laughs> congrats congrats we're, we're we'll be waiting um invader league single elims have started uh they're actually live updates from the front um i believe uh bobby sapphire uh just took town cali Toolman um in what i believe is the first game of Inla- invader league single elims um, and I know that we normally don't like cover play by play on scoundrels, but I cover it play by play in my like head. So um, I just figured we'd announce it here. Uh, so congratulations, Bobby Sapphire. And um, I believe that's uh, the Hyperloops. Yep. And um, I think Mike, Mike Jem. Yeah. Mike Jem is his yep. actual name. Yep. So uh, he'll be on to uh, what is technically round one and he'll be playing against Habmo. Rebel Mirror which there's going to be a lot of this season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then uh, we would ordinarily be talking about SoCal, 
um we're gonna restrict it to the news segment again because uh the winner of socal uh is normally on this podcast and we'll have an interview with him um next week uh, again he uh didn't didn't make it back in time so uh moving that's the news anybody got anything to add uh snail tanks are in canada <laughs> So oh, actually, now cri- that you mentioned that, cri- man, that's great. Right? <laughs> Woo! Um, the airports are working fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just like order stuff and have it sent to Tim's house. Um, have it sent here. I'm like we're like an hour from the border. We literally yeah, can drive yeah, up and grab fair. it. <laughs> that's fair. Um, so so Tim, I think i think it was you that posted the picture in our um yeah tft discord but there's been some discoveries on that snail tank face <laughs> debacle 2.0 um <laughs> although i don't think it's a mistake this time i don't think yeah. it's a mistake either <laughs> but yeah the base size for the snail tank is a little bit surprised to everyone is actually bigger than the gav and the bus base by a fair bit it's a whole 30 millimeters or a little over an inch longer than that base. So it is a even bigger base. <laughs> and, and I believe that base that you're talking about was, was previously the biggest base. In yeah. 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 It's, the, yeah, it's uh, cause it's uh, like seven, seven inches or something. Yeah. And the new one is like around eight and a half, nine inches. So big. <laughs> Well, uh, so for the, uh, is the snail tank speed one or is it speed two? Speed one. Okay. So that means roughly a speed one move off the snail tank is 12 inches. It's a foot, right? Yep. Um, so two moves will basically cover two thirds of the board um, across the short span of the table, right? And in, in, three, in three turns, it can cross the entirety of the table oh, yeah. the long way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> uh, which is i don't know uh yeah it's a lot it's a big boy it is a, it is a very big boy um i can i i i and i'd like to say like i'm gonna throw this in here because i know not a lot of people get to play against um the the closest right is the gav tank uh that the empire has as far as base size and so you need to be prepared. That thing is going to get to you faster and it's going to block you out faster than you think it's going to. And so watch your alleyways, watch where you're putting your units because those things can just like, uh, I was going to say something that could have been taken really wrong, but they can just block up these alleyways that your units are going to go down and you won't be able to, to go that way anymore. Um, just, just, it's going to happen faster than you think it's going to happen. So- um is the is the base the same width like on the on the uh i guess yeah the the width of the base is the same i uh, i believe so okay. although i can if you say something else i can quickly check my you're good is we don't we don't need to check it but i i recall um, it, it looked pretty similar it, yeah so. it, i'm just looking at the picture now i don't know this for sure it looks to be the same width it could be oh. but it's not mar- it's not much bigger if it is bigger so sure sure um yeah so i mean it's gonna be a big blocking piece i mean <laughs> we'll see i mean that that means i think the bus is still gonna be more of a menace because of reckless driver but and it's uh, also hover ground so we can, like the snail tank is way taller than the gas so we can get over a fair bit of things but it'll still like it still can't jump over buildings or anything whereas the bus can yeah, so. it's also got weak point on the sides, which is, I think is a much bigger deal. You know, one of the, the uh, one of the best things about the bus is that you can't hit the weak point very easily. Um, yeah. So, all right. Well, yeah, that's a little bit of news that I didn't have penciled in here. So, um, uh, separatist players rejoice. I think there's going to be a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, let's uh, let's go into some of our strategy tactics talk today. Get ready for advanced tactics. So, Tim, last week we had you on and you were talking about prepping for a what I believe was a local skirmish tournament. That is and, correct. And that tournament has now happened. Um, it has. What's the lowdown? Did you win? Uh, well, let I'll, I'll, I'll let the suspense continue on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <All> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. 
No, 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 no. I get it. I get it. Make let's, it let's, interesting. Let's, let's make it interesting. Yeah, make yeah, it interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I'll give you the quick rundown. So there's 11 players in total. Um, so nothing huge, but decent little size tournament. We had uh, three Imperials, three Separatists, two Rebel, and three Republic. So pretty even uh, faction representation. Um, I just, if anyone does remember, was playing a uh, uh, guard list, and it was a uh, Wookiee Chieftain, uh, Wookiee Warriors with a Bowcaster, two RTs with flamethrowers, and then just two naked phase ones. So a pretty aggressive shove it in your opponent's face list. Um, so show up, and then first round, I'm paired against Matt. He is playing a another. He's playing a rebel list. He has some vets, Leia, uh, Mark II's. He has his own Wookies and then his own ATRT. Uh, we end up battle cards being Dawn elimination flanking positions. That Dawn is essentially limited viz. So basically, uh, I forced that. It wasn't in the third column, but he in turn zero didn't ban in the first time in conditions. So I was able to force Dawn after that which uh, as we talked after the game was his big mistake because I was basically able to just approach his list without him getting any turn one shooting off and ended up actually tabling him in the end because I just ran some Wookiees into his face and ATRTs and flame stuff off the board. So win one, done. <laughs> On to uh, game two. This is where lists start getting fun. So round two, I was paired against Chris um, and he actually brought what I thought was actually a little bit scared of this list uh, for good reason. He had a rebel officer, two naked rebel troopers, two Wookiee warriors, but the shooty Wooks. So they are the uh, range three sharpshooter one Wookiees with bow casters and then impact grenades. And then two laser cannon teams, both with linked target array and barrage generators. Oh, interesting. Which um, turns out FD cannons on skirmish can shoot across the entire table. So they're pretty yeah, they good. Can just hit, they can just hit everything. <laughs> everything yeah as as well as i'm trying to run atrt flamethrowers at a list that has a bunch of impact <laughs> so um and this game also there was a big central building so i was sort of forced to go around the outside of the map and did my best ended up losing by one point on elimination um he very smartly got rid of dawn and it's his first uh ban in turn zero so there wasn't a whole lot I could do there. Um, I got my Wookiees in and they just couldn't quite kill enough to be worth it. So now I'm one and one. On to round three. This list, we play my Padawan, who's Peter Bueller. He has his Iden ISF uh, snow trooper list. So we've played against each other many times. Um, and basically, uh, he has enough crit to get my ATRTs off the table. And I have enough melee to wipe him off the table. So we just sort of run at each other and things start dying and by the end of the game there's like uh eight or nine models left on the table <laughs> but not actually that many units had or units had actually fully died so it was actually three two uh elimination win for myself so i maintain my master status over uh, my apprentice That's so that's important <laughs> <laughs> gotta, <clears throat> gotta maintain that cred so anyway so at the end of that that puts uh i'm at two and one um but I had a pretty good MOV. So I was the top ranked two and one. And then there was two, three and O's. One of the three and O players had to leave. He had previous engagements or something came up, not entirely sure. Um, but anyway, so uh, for the fourth game, which is just a top two cut, I get called back into action and it's against the FD laser cannon list again. Oh boy. <laughs> so we line up across from each other again on a map that's a little bit more open, which <laughs> is interesting. And I have taken my lessons from the last game and just decide, well, we're just going to go full on force. Uh, I banned all the way to face off and it was elimination again. So I did play four games of elimination, which was hooray. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I take you face off, which is the objective or the deployment that gets my list as close to his list as possible. Um, and I, again, just basically run at him. And this time uh, my saves held up just long enough to get into his list. It ended up being a tie on elimination, three to three, and I won by 15 victory points destroyed, or 15 points destroyed. So I ended up taking the victory of the tournament by the slimmest of margins. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, it was a fun day. Uh, fun was had by all. Um, just shout out, it's uh, our local, it's the Winnipeg Wampas is our is the group that puts it on. 
Uh, thanks to Nathan for both organizing and being the head judge. Um, also shout out to, uh, sorry, I have a <laughs> three, five design, uh, who you can find on Etsy. He does a lot of 3d printing, um, but he did the prize support and the top prize was a, uh, big carrying case for tokens and stuff. It's designed That's as cool. a, uh, uh, sort of a crate, like, you know, those, the supply crates that you get in mm -hmm. vital assets. He basically took that design and turned it into a like five deck uh, card and token holder. It's really That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah. So shout out to everyone who came. Shout out to the organizers. Shout out to Price Support. It was a fun time had by all. Uh, lessons learned are that FD cannons are real good when they can shoot across the entire table, <laughs> which I don't think is too shocking, but was a very fun time to learn out learn. Um, and also an interesting thing about map design. So a lot of the maps. So in general, on like a typical Legion table, you don't really want to have like a big building in the middle because then you have weird objectives that go on top of it and stuff. In Skirmish, you don't actually have any objectives that are like grab something from the middle. So most of the maps had a fairly sizable central like building. It didn't have to be like huge, but pretty big. And I really like that. I was some like sort of when I was first viewing all the tables, I was a little bit sort of my Legion brain was something was dinging, all this looks a little bit weird. Then after playing it, it was a lot of fun. So that's a sort of a weird, another th weird thing between skirmish and main games is you can have a big central- A centerpiece. Uh, centerpiece, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do think um, one of my, I'm, I'm not sure it's a complaint, um, but maybe like criticisms or critiques of, you know, how, you know, the competitive rule set of Legion is like, you definitely don't want a crazy centerpiece in the middle of the table um and, and that's something that like 40k like doesn't really care about or sigmar or whatever you know you could put like a cool centerpiece in the middle of the table and it's not a big deal um so i that sounds like a good thing about skirmish frankly yeah yeah um that could change if there's new objectives added in later that put something in the middle that you need to get but as it stands right now having a building or a big vehicle or something in the middle is a-okay so yeah, no, it was a good day. Uh, I think that is all I have to say about it, unless there's questions, comments, concerns. <laughs> what, do, um, what do you think would need, to, what, what should stay the same and what should be improved to make it like more popular? Um, well, one thing that's really awesome, so like is the timing of the tournament. So we played four rounds. The fourth round was just a top two cut, but like we, Doors opened at 11 to set up train and then do a player meeting. So we started our first round at noon. We were done and had everything packed up by 8.30. Oh, yeah. And that's four rounds. Like that, that, that is a, I think, in my opinion, a really good thing about skirmish. Um, if you're trying to do a games day and have a pretty sizable tournament, but be really quick. Um, you, could, you could even, if you wanted to do a big skirmish tournament, you could easily do like five rounds in a day. Hmm. And it would be a lot, but it wouldn't be too bad. Um, the only thing I might change, and I, I don't know if I, but it, it is a little bit weird playing five round games because there's two of the games where I was like, I just need one more turn. And my brain was like, <laughs> you have one more turn, but I didn't have one more turn. Yeah. <laughs> my, so yeah. Yeah. My experience with skirmish has been that like, I almost, so I don't mind the smaller game size. I actually wish it was played on a standard size table um personally i i don't know uh and i i'm not sure like how much time the table itself adds i think it's more like the units involved is the big time sink right so i just uh i think from my perspective is like when you sit down at a skirmish table and i think last week you were talking about like you I, um correct me if i'm wrong you kind of liked that the strategy was sort of set earlier in the game right um i definitely part of me just like wants the strategy of 800 point legion and the time of 500 point legion and kind of just like combine those two things together you know yeah um i could if if sort of concerns about mats were not an issue i would actually be interested to see like skirmish on four by three tables sure 
So you get a little bit, like, I think a six by three would be a bit big because you could have, if it's elimination or whatever, you could hide your whole army waiting off in a corner. It would be no fun. Sure. But four by three would add just a little bit more room because often there's sort of one big central alley that you kind of have to go up. Whereas with four by three, you could easily see maps that have a little bit more complexity to them. Mm -hmm. So that would be sort of, if all else equal, that would be one thing I'd be interested in looking at. Yeah, it's like it's hard to get away from a lightsaber user on a three by three <laughs> map, right? Like, there's no, there's no running away from that fight. It's gonna happen, and and yeah, yeah. you have to deal with it. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just would like a little bit more play there. I think. Um, yeah, um, it was uh, it was interesting what listed well. Like, so the two lists that went three and zero before the Top Cut game were the was the FD Cannon with the Wookies. And then the uh, the person who had to leave was an eight act, I think it was eight act droid list. Mm. Um, so, which are sort of the eight act droid list is definitely an archetype that I <laughs> have a lot of activations is a pretty tried and true strategy. Yeah. Um, the FD cannons were something that um, when you think about it, totally makes sense, but it was something I hadn't really considered. Um, the, and then the one person, only one person bought a four user surprisingly. Mm. Um, in our chat beforehand, a lot of people were humming and hawing, but a lot of people, this was their sort of first big in-person game or for in-person tournament out after COVID. So no one, not a lot of people didn't want to bring sort of really complicated pieces. They wanted um, to have fun and bring more easier to run less, basically, um, was I was the feeling I got. Um, but the one person who brought Vader, has, he went two and one, had a fun time running Vader at things. <laughs> So uh, yeah, no, it was a good day had by all. Um, and then the the person who won uh, the painting contest, I for, I for, forgive me whoever it was I forget who it was, but he had a fully painted five hundred first uh, clone army with Rex leaning it, and it was immaculate. Oh, it was that's cool. Very well painted. So uh, congrats him. I think it was Kyle was potentially his name, but I I totally that was something I did not forgot to write down. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. Cool. Nice. Um, well, I guess you won. So congrats. Yeah. Great. <laughs> there you Good go. Job. There you go. You gotta you gotta keep that rep up, man. Keep that rep up. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, <laughs> You're part of a serious fifth, squad now. Yeah, fifth fifth trooper winning all over the place this weekend. Um well, and somebody had said, Oh, you're submarine. And I was like, kind of, but it was also kind of funny that the person I lost to and originally I beat in the final, yeah. which makes it feel a little less like a submarine and more like redemption. Yeah, it's a it's a vengeance <laughs> arc, you know. That's yeah. that's totally okay. Yeah. Um so shall we kick into Invader League? Let's do it. Let's do yep. it. All right. So, um, Invader League has officially, El Elims has officially started. We've had lists for, I don't know, like 48 hours or something. Um, and like we said, the first game has been played. Um, and uh, hot off the presses, uh, and, I, and I gotta thank uh, Callie Toolman, um, because he actually just posted a bunch of sweet Invader data that I'm about to use in this podcast. Um, and he literally posted it um seven minutes ago so uh <laughs> excellent I, uh, yeah, nice. yeah worked out worked out um so invader league single elims are here um there's some things i would like to talk about um and so i actually was a little bit surprised looking at the list um from the jump uh there was less dsd spider droids than i thought in fact well actually looking at this list the, that might not be true um it definitely when i was like cruising through the list i was like this doesn't feel like a lot of dwarf spider droids but anybody want to take a stab at how many dwarf spider droids there were uh, there were 21 separatists 21 separatists i was gonna i would say about a dozen so pretty similar there's 25 Holy crap. <laughs> so out of 21 separatists on average every separatist list has at least one now most separatist lists if they took a dwarf spider droid they probably took three just to be clear um but there are 25 dwarf spider droids in six steps oh. so very large shift you know i think i was definitely 
in camp like dwarf spider droids just kind of replace staps i think they at least form a new list that i think is a lot easier and like way more generalist than the staff mm. build um which i think is is pretty cool um it's actually there are no support units taken in over, over six in any faction um other than the dwarf spider droids mm. so uh that's kind of interesting um so Faction breakdown for single elims was 11 empire. I'm going to put a little asterisk on that that we're going to circle back around to. Um, 28 rebels, 21 separatists, and 20 republic players. Um, yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Um, and so I know that Team Fifth Trooper, other than uh, Techno, Lucas, uh, I think is all on republic this this go around uh i'm playing republic tim you're playing your your uh is it is it a carbon copy of your list no it has a, has a couple extra upgrades but essentially it's a carbon copy okay what yeah. what did you change about it uh the only well i didn't ch- i just added a few things because i wanted i didn't think i needed as much of a bid so i just sure. added in c's and uh recon intel onto padme okay um and then i also waffled pretty hard on adding uh improv improv orders onto um something just because it would really help but i had i was trying to sh- I was just shooting into the dark with the bid and it turns out i bid pretty hard for this season with 11 <laughs> yeah. points <laughs> yeah so I, I don't have the stats on the bids um but i think they're overall pretty low um and that's i think we can attribute to a four card flip and red player picking table side probably right um yeah so yeah um i guess let's go through some like just uh brief stats we already kind of went through the support um there's nothing really uh, super remarkable about the support uh rank in any of the lists other than the dsd spider droid bit um but let's let's talk about commanders um you guys want to take a stab at the top three taken commanders this invader league oh i should overall (laughs) Don't cheat, Tim. I, I, I was like, oh, I should no cheating. Stats. <laughs> no cheating. But yeah, overall. So this is every faction. Uh, Rebel officer. Okay. Um. Yeah. Or the uh, T series. The T Yeah. So he said top three. So there's two. Oh, there's two. Or... Yeah, Rebel officer, and then I'm gonna say Obi Wan. Okay. Okay, so um, there are five rebel officers in 28 rebel lists. Oh, wow. Which is an interesting number. <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised too, frankly. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, uh, I'm, we might be able to check in further data based on the numbers I'm seeing. I'm kind of mm-hmm. expecting there would be a lot of field commanders actually mm-hmm. in the rebels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so the who else did you guys call out? um t-series t-series it's less than kraken i see yeah it's only seven there are only seven t-series and 21 separatist lists um and then i think the last one you called out was kenobi who um came in at a hot number of two Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So the top commander taken this Invader League season, which uh, I think really sh- shouldn't be a huge surprise, is there are 16 clone commanders. Um, and uh, which is actually, I think, less than there should be because every every Republic list should have one uh, <laughs> because uh, them with fives is pretty good. But, um, you know, I appreciate people kind of uh, doing different stuff. Um, and the second most taken commander is Cassian Andor at 12. Mm. Um, and then following that up too, there's Shriv at 11. Okay. So Shriv, Shriv yeah, I, I hadn't checked the upgrades yeah. yet. So, so Shriv comes in at 11, um, which makes sense. I think that's yeah. th- the, the rebel commanders look a little light, light on this list. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I thought for sure it was going to be Rebel Commanders based yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I think a lot of people are just like, you know what? I think I want my AA5 or I want my airspeeder to be my commander. And you know what? Yeah. I think that that's fair. Um, so a lot of uh, the second most taken commander in Gar was, you guessed it, our boy Rex. Um, 
most taken commander in Separatists was Kraken. Is Kraken Chargy Boy or is Kalani Chargy Boy? Uh, uh, Kraken is Chargy Boy and Override. Okay. okay. Yep. 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 Um, no Grievous. Uh, <laughs> no, no Leia in Rebels. Um, no yeah. Krennic and Empire. And frankly, uh, other than that, um, there's a pretty even spread of Empire commanders. Callus is only one of, but but everybody else is two or three. Um, operatives. I'm just who's the most taken operative? R2 by far, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's 33 R2s uh, <laughs> be- between between Gar and Rebels. And the ne- the next closest operative on the list is K2SO coming in at 11. And then everybody else is at five or below. Uh, the only operative not to show up this Invader League season is uh, Cad Bane. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it's wah, not, wah, wah. not surprising at not all. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's nothing really remarkable about that list. Uh, cores. Um, everything's pretty represented. I think it's actually interesting... This number strikes me as I, I I'm not sure how it could be right, but um, it says there's only five B twos and all of single elims. Yeah, well, if people are like dwarf spider droids and B twos fill a kind of similar niche, yeah, in that they're a armored piece that shoots well. Um, they're a little bit different in that the the uh, dwarf spider droid either wants to get right in their face or doesn't want to get in your face at all. Um, but I think it's a little bit of a symptom of newness. Like there's a lot of things that you can take in separatists right now that you couldn't take before. And people might be a little less wanting to take something they've solved more or less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, nothing super crazy there. I think otherwise, um, well, actually I take that back. There are more phase one clones than phase two clones, which I actually think is kind of a big deal. Hmm. Yeah. There are, in uh, fact, there are twice as many phase one clones as phase two clones. Yeah, uh, I think it's people taking more Jedi and Wookiee lists than yeah, I, I agree. Straight up clone lists this year, for sure. Um, and I actually think the next thing that we're going to talk about is uh, the, the, both the special forces and the heavy slot. I think kind of tell the story of the seasons <laughs> Invader League so far. So, uh, um, special forces. Uh, Tim, clearly you're looking at the numbers, so you don't get it I, anymore. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm looking. I'm, I'm actually covering up each column yeah, as we yeah. go. You oh, cheater! Okay. You cheater! Oh. They're all on the same page. I'm How looking dare at it too. You. Well, I'm <laughs> only coming covering the numbers once you reveal them. I'm, I'm okay. absolutely not looking at it. <laughs> so I don't so, even know so where Jay, it is to look at. <laughs> Jay, if you had to guess, what are the top three special forces choices taken for Invader? Uh, Wookies. Okay. Uh, more Wookies arcs and uh, I don't know I don't know the third one maybe something in Separatist probably maybe the Magna Guard yeah you pretty much nailed this one um, so I want to be very clear here uh, this is they've got it actually broken out for the Wookies between Wookie Warriors and Kashyyyk uh, Defenders yeah. however we, we, we can go over the stats so um, there is between Gar and Rebels, there are 40 Wookiee Warriors <laughs> yeah. and 11 Kashyyyk Defenders, bringing the grand total of number of special Wookiee Special Forces units to, is that uh, 40, 51? Um, so basically what you're saying is almost ju- or over half the list's in in invader league have wookies in them well let me let, let's even let's <laughs> let's let's go even farther because yeah. there's only 48 rebel and republic lists combined <laughs> okay and there's 51 wookies in in this in this tournament so um it's a lot of wookies a lot yeah. of wookies and i think to that point um I'm going to jump to third place before we hit second. Uh, there's 26 Magna Guard units. Mm. I think that makes sense. Uh, here's why I, they're new, right? People want to get them on a table, whether it's virtual or not, you know, and I think they have some interesting play in the 
it, we've talked about this before, but in the meta of of melee, right? Like I think you need something that can support that, and and that that's a good thing for the droid boys. Yeah, I mean that's seventy seven melee centric special forces units across like eighty lists. <laughs> Like the the uh, average here is basically like every list in Invader League has yeah. at least one hundred point melee <laughs> focused unit. Um, Perfect, love it. Which is pretty crazy. Uh, number two was Arc Strike teams. Not a not a not a big. You know they're they're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, heavies though. Uh, <laughs> this is actually really sad. Um, so empire took two heavies separatists took three heavies um republic took four heavies and the rebels took i'm doing some quick math 20 36 <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Uh, <laughs> there are 36 rebel heavies and there are uh what nine heavies combined in other factions um so if you want to play heavy units i guess you got to play rebels um mm. apparently oh, how things have changed yeah i mean i there are three saber tanks that's the most that is the highest number of heavies that is not a rebel unit and, and one of them's already knocked out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's a little scary, I think. Uh, uh, I, I think, you know, the T-47, I actually think, is a lot better than the AA-5. Um, I think Unorthodox Tactician is very good, but um, the a Air Spears are really good. Yeah, I think they are. Uh, someone who has played against them and played them a few times, they're they they're good but i find that they can be a little glass cannony depending on what you're playing and like you know you feel like you're like oh i got I, you know these t47s are going to eat something alive and the next thing you know they're like one's down and you're like uh oh where i feel like the tank just has the versatility of you know blocking out units carrying units like doing a lot more um but yeah i i listen to uh, t47s real real good and if anybody has been listening to our podcast for a long time or just started and started from the beginning, you know how that conversation has completely changed in the last in the last year. So it's, it's changed a lot. Yeah. It, I, uh, it, it changed for those of you who are new and maybe have weren't around in the beginning. We we had this event called the Northeast Open. And we gave an award to the most jankiest list, which was called the Golden T-47. And T-47s were so bad that I literally just took the model for the T-47 and spray painted it gold and put it on the top of, a, of an award for somebody because I was like, I'm never going to play this. <laughs> so that just goes to tell you uh, how bad they used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it is interesting to me that between there's only three separatist heavies between the AAT and snail tank. Um, right. That, that one seemed, mm. that one seemed a little, like, I, I, I think part of that is there's a lot of people who want to play heavies and decided, oh, well, we're just going to play rebel heavies. Yeah. Um, I also think like, I, I was expecting, I was expecting the AAT to be a handful and then the snail tank to be, a little a slightly hard larger handful but to only be three seems quite low to me so this is this is my take on it and i don't know if people thought this deep about it but this is kind of where i ended up was that i actually think the rebel heavies are in a, a little bit of a unique spot um against the spider droids i think the spider droids what this tells me is that basically no vehicles were taken for the most part other than rebel heavies clearly you know tim you've got your saber tank list but like but overall people avoided vehicles yeah that weren't rebel heavies and all of the rebel heavies have compulsory moves and i actually think that that's yeah. a big deal when we're talking mm -hmm. about ion you still get to do something on your turn right mm -hmm. if you, even if you get locked right um and so 
I don't know. I, I, I think that there's a little bit something to that. They're a little bit resilient. They definitely, um, I also think like a T-47 airstrike can just like remove a spider droid from the table. Yep. You know, um, so there, there's also that aspect to it too, in that like the rebels, I think are uniquely able to deal with the anti-armor pieces that have been brought into the meta. Um, yep. So, yeah. And, and, and the rebel heavies are also good at dealing with melee skews. They are, they're totally yep. good at, at yeah. that. Um, yeah. So I, I think they're, they're uniquely poised um, to do that. Uh, and I think I actually, so I was looking at through some of the upgrades, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's 29 copies of force push this, this invader league season, which means there's at least 29 force users, um, which is actually like, I think I, I would have to go back and look at the stats, but that's, that's like a pretty large percentage of the field have, you know, a force slot on their list, um, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um, how many copies of tenacity? Oh yeah. 70. <laughs> 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 makes sense yeah. um anything else notable in here uh so there's 25 uh spider droids <laughs> i would just and, number. <laughs> and so these are a little skewed because there are like some i think the snails have um yeah so there are 26 protocols because there's a snail tank that also mm. has to take a protocol, but 22 of 25 spider droids have attack protocols. Well, <laughs> and, and guess what the number of ion blasters is on those, on those. I, it's spiders. gotta be like 25, right? It's gotta be 24. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's actually, so I find it interesting because I actually think flamers would not be terrible against, you know, a uh, hundred um, units of like melee special forces. Or, I, I think the problem though is they don't have a secondary weapon at all at range. Yeah. yeah. And with the avail, like if the engagement protocols was AI attack only, um, then you ha- would be it would be interesting. Yeah. Because then you, if you couldn't attack, you could do whatever you wanted. Now generally that'd be a move, but yeah, I, I think it's just different too. Like if you know if you go in knowing there's going to be a lot of melee stuff, like most of those are they're like low model count high wound count That's you know fair. units that a flamethrower is going to do just not do as much damage to you know as you would want it um yeah and i think they're anticipating the party bus right they're going okay yeah i know this thing's going to be there so i'm going to eye on the crap out of these guys when they fly up here and as i have personally felt ion is the worst i hate it I hate Ion. I hate Jay, it. So Jay much. hates it whenever I take my Bistan squad. Oh, God. <sighs> Anytime I played a tournament a couple months ago and somebody had Bistan, I was like, oh, crap. I just, uh, Ion's just rough. <laughs> 17 bursts of speeds. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, people keep, I keep on hearing, like, from other community members, like, oh, burst of speed's not going to be a big deal. And I'm like, no, no, I, I think you're kind of wrong. I, I don't know. I, so here's uh, an interesting question, Mike. This this is for you. Yeah. Um, how many Vaders are there? There's not there's a lot, and eight. and I actually, that's something I want to circle. There's, I think there's like what three or something. Uh, oh. five are, between Op and Commander. Yeah, there are three Commander Vaders, and one of them is not by choice. Um, so I mean. In fairness, I didn't play Vader, and I, I I was definitely waffling on that. But I actually want to talk about what I uh, what I well before yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I do I, I I know what you want to get to, and I do too. But really quick, I think to go back to our conversation, you and I we maybe argued about this, and you were like, "Hey, I think burst of speed Vader is going to take Invader League by storm, right?" And what I had said, and and I think still holds true, is that as good as we think he's going to be i don't think a lot of people are comfortable with vader to begin with and and they see this other new shiny stuff and they're like "Eh, i'll just i'm gonna go play this you know because vader's not really i wasn't great with vader and i i don't really know how burst of speed is going to change that you know so (laughs) so i think that's maybe what happened a little bit i actually think the the bitter bigger calculus here is that the amount of Wookiees in Magna Guard. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, in a world where there's that much 
melee running around it you know i don't know how much sense yeah. it makes i'm i'm glad i didn't pick that for this meta you know um for sure uh, i definitely would i think rather have vader with saber throw than than burst of speed maybe this season um just for a variety of reasons um but yeah i don't know i mean i still think it's very good um i think people are sleeping on it i think people are going to get caught unexpectedly about burst of speed this season and um they're going to be like oh that's what that card does you know um and uh yeah i mean i listened to a couple other podcasts uh over the last like week or two where people were like talking about their first like interactions with burst of speed and and they're like oh this is really good <laughs> you know and, and I'm, yeah. Like, I'm like yeah man like it's uh it's it's pretty excellent um all right let's get to your topic pal well i want to talk about my list real quick because all right. um i registered a list called rookie star which i thought was hilarious um it is rex and wookies therefore it's rookie <laughs> um and Nailed so it. Yeah, basically, I just traded out all my arc strikes for naked Wookiees with offensive push and tenacity, which apparently is the <laughs> thing you can do and like still have the points for. Um, I have a clone commander, Rex with aggressive tactics, jetpack, recon, intel, five clone squads with heavies, and three Wookiee squads with offensive push and tenacity. Good Lord. Uh, there's basically it's basically like eight core units, three of which are really good in melee and have pierce in melee, and um haven't played it yet <laughs> but but it seems really good uh i don't know like you know so um there are 25 34 wounds of clones in the list which um effective health wise 34 times three is what one 102 Yep. Yes, it's 102 effective health wounds with surges, right? And it used to have an additional 18 uh, through the arc strikes, which would have put you at 120. But the Wookiees are like 27 before you factor in their saves, so it's it's like it's like 140 now. Um, it's kind of gross. Yeah, it's wild. Um, and and the Wookiees don't have like a. Like their floor is way better than the arc strike teams because the arc strike teams can just like get blown away. So everything in the list is just super resilient. Um, not to mention, uh, call me like you can use call me captain way more aggressively with three squads of Wookiees. Um, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm 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 pumped. I'm amped for it. I'm like ready to go. <laughs> like six black, three red, Pierce one in melee. Like let's do this. <laughs> um did you do you, you have jetpack on your rex right i do, I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 um so uh, yeah it, i it's i think it's a little soft to armor um but but looking at the stats i actually am less concerned about that than i was because there's more afis than there are t47s um and i'm not sure i care that much about the aa5 like the t47 could give me problems mm. but the aa5 like I just got to worry about what's inside it. And I think three squads of Wookiees and a Rex star minus the strike teams can probably deal with that. Um, yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I, uh, I also think I'm the only person that uh, came up with this idea based on, <laughs> based on the lists I found. So uh, I don't know. Um, I think Kyle think I thought I was a little crazy. Um, Kyle registered like a, just big ball of fur for republic it's like wookie chieftain i'm not sure if he should took chewy or not he might have i think he took rex over chewy he did take rex now that now that you say that i remember i i I was having that conversation with him about it which i actually think um i think a lot of people are onto something with the rex uh kashik defenders take that clankers play yeah. It's kind of gross. It, like range four sharpshooter Wookiee shot with Pierce is like actually a little bit better. It's not as consistent, but it's like on par with arcs, mm-hmm. like a full arc. Yeah. Um, well, and the, the range, like the, the shooty Wooks have two really good options for support. You can either take them in Republic with Rex for take that clankers, or you take them in rebels and you get, a bus throwing aims at them left right and center 
Yeah. <laughs> so that, I, that, that was, I waffled real hard on my list. I had like three or four different options. And one of them was three shooty wooks backed up by a bus or two with targeting scopes. Cause you can net out like five or six hits with sharpshooter one with Pierce one pretty consistently. <laughs> yeah, I, I really, I, I, uh, I really hope unorthodox tactician gets nerfed, um, <laughs> so, like, like now. Um, <laughs> I watched somebody the other day drop, like, I don't know. It, they played last stand, so they had they had two <laughs> buses. They had Cassian and they had K two, and and they had two tacticians and they played last stand and they had like i don't know how many aim tokens there was on both cassian and k2 but it was like at least six and (laughs) it was just gross um i don't know uh the the things you can do and and like and then you got to give aim tokens to other things too (laughs) you know (laughs) it's just like all right I, i guess this is fine except not really you know um yeah it's i i'm not i'm not even sure how oppressive it is it just feels bad the uh, and then the the cries of the everyone in the audience going well like that's what you did with clones forever but (laughs) that feels bad too that like both of those things i think feel tremendously terrible to be across the table from i am supportive of the clone nerf um you know i hope that uh they've taken into account like uh if it makes clones worse they need to like readjust points and stuff along with it um but but i am fully supportive and nerfing clone trooper it is oppressive and stupid um but you know we live in a world where we're gonna do degenerate things to win leash tournaments so um you know i mean your saber tank thing is cool but it's it's also not super fun to be on the other side of when it's (laughs) pinned you into your deployment so I, I i mean it's it's only an uninspired list so it's fine i know i know <laughs> rex star is too <laughs> oh so good yeah <laughs> um so yeah i mean i think uh does anybody else have some preliminary thoughts on invader league stuff uh before we get into my hot button topic about invader league no, I think it's cool. I think it's great to see. I mean, what was it just a month ago? Barely, we were talking about Rex Star as the meta, right? And I think to see it shift, I, I, that's what I love about this game is it's not like I feel like with 40k and stuff, it's always Space Marines, right? Like it's oh, okay, okay, yeah, they're always good, right? Like this is like every every month when a new unit comes out, we're like, and here's the new meta, you know? And I I love that about this game. The I think part of that too is like I think it was Kyle asked in the single them chat. So who's actually played with their list before, or who hasn't played with their list? And like a good portion of people are like, "Yep, never played with it." So I think yep. there's a lot of people this year who are both interested in what in all the new units and also a little bit yeah. tired of the existing meta. So a lot of people just sort of threw out threw out a list that they think might be good, but haven't got any practice in, which if I knew this was going to happen, I would have picked a different list. (laughs) (laughs) There's also a lot of people that are like definitely okay with the existing meta and how many AA5s got taken. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you know, just, just to be clear. Um, I think there's definitely people on both sides of that fence. Um, I think it's definitely a rebel world right now and we're all just living in it. Yep. (sighs) Which is great. Which is great. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I, guess... I mean, listen, not to get into detail about how they're here, but it's nice to see because it's been, I think, uh, you know, Tauntauns probably were the last time that the Rebels had an upper hand, really, uh, in the meta. So it, it's just nice to see it wash out and, and circle back around, you know? Yeah, I, I get, I, I feel that. Um all right, you guys ready to have a heated discussion slash debate? This, I'm glad you left this to last. Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. All right, so I want to open with everybody that works on Invader League puts in a ton of work, and I appreciate you all for that. Like, 
This is just, like when I'm someone just... says, "Hey, no offense." A, a little <laughs> bit, but I just like I have I have a I have a beef. I have a little bit right. of beef. Um, and what do you I, got? I Let's prefer hear. to speak my mind. So, um, all right. <clears throat> it was decided. I was actually this was public a while ago. I just um either didn't realize it or forgot. And when it actually become like st- stared me in the face, I was like, Ooh, this is not, I don't love this. So um, there was a decision that was made uh, basically to make it so that the people that um, did not turn their lists in on time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, the consequence or punishment or effect of that was that they would be given a empire list constructed by the judges. Um, okay. And I, so my, my issue with this is that basically it is kind of like saying, you know, uh, plain empire is like akin, akin to getting like a warning in a tournament. They're so bad. And I think that that's a bad message for um, like TOs to be sending to the community. Look, I, I'm I'm a talking head most of the time. I will tell you right now, Empire is not in a great place. I think that that's different than um, TOs kind of sending the signal, sending that same signal. Like they should be neutral entities and um i don't know i i, I think and, it, was, and was it was it, intended as a joke i think yeah um my concern is that um people that don't know a ton about what's going on or you know um j- just see that and are like oh like even even the organizers of the tournaments like think the army that i play is like ridiculously terrible like why should i even bother yeah. with this game I, and i think know, that's very different than like hey that knucklehead mike on notorious scoundrels like empire is trash right. I, I think that that's very different i think the other problem that you have from an invader league standpoint and this is one of my favorite movies uh end game marvel the avengers end game movie where hulk says either it's all a joke or none of it is when he's talking about time travel right and i think when you're doing stuff like this where you're like saying oh it's a joke but we're making it happen when you're trying to legitimize something like invader league i mean this is one of the most competitive events in the world because the world can all do it from from their home and don't have to travel and spend all this money and you're trying to legitimize it as that but then you do something like this that you say is a joke well, it either either Invader League's a joke, right? And 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 we can do fun stuff like that and have a good time, or it's a serious tournament. Like it's it's one or the other. And and when you straddle this line, it, it becomes confusing. I think. Right. And I and because I always get the like, listen, I don't think I don't think anybody on here. Uh, this is a surprise. I, I, I'm not a fan of TTS, uh, the, the game on there. And, and I'm, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Viv Invader League. It's just my own preference and how I like to play the game and, and how I see it. Uh, but you can't sit there and tell me how competitive and how serious Invader League is and that I should be a fan of it and then do something like this and say, well, it's just a joke that, that completely like, negates any argument to it's it no it's a real it's a real competitive tournament is it because you just did something really weird tim's thinking he's got his thinking <laughs> glasses he's, on it's like it's like i need to make a calculated decision on what i'm about to say <laughs> well, so well i i i'm trying to i'm thinking everything through because this i was not part part i was not uh, here we go well, well no I, I i am thinking on the fly because i did yeah, not know the yeah. opinions being voiced before i yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Heard them I, just I, I did warn you a little bit <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah before the cast <laughs> um and and i will say i i did voice this already to the single elimination chat um i was actually a little bit surprised i got shot down pretty hard about like 
people are like, oh, it's fine. And, and, and maybe it is, maybe I'm, it's, it's in, totally possible. I'm blowing this out of proportion. Um, so I, I do actually think that a organizer list for, if you don't hand your list in is a really good idea because then you don't get any weird yep. shenanigans of, oh, I forgot to do my list, but I've actually seen all the other lists, blah, blah, blah. Um, executing it with one single faction is also fine, but saying it outright is a joke. I don't know. It's also that the lists that they made up were um, not the typical competitive empire lists either. They definitely weren't. Um, oh, really? So, yeah, so it's that's another sort of aspect in my mind at least that it's I think part of the part of the thing is that it's trying stuff sort of they put together lists that are interest like are sort of a little bit out of left field it's not like they're taking the very sort of meta defining empire list and saying these are your punishment I think is how I want like right like um sure they definitely didn't like um uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a little hard to say what a what a meta imperial <laughs> list looks like right now, but I get what you're trying to say. Yeah. Um, so, so at that point, why wouldn't you just DQ someone? Because you're basically, to a degree, handing them a DQ. If it's if it's a non-competitive list, I didn't have a choice, and it and it was chosen for me. You're basically saying uh, anybody who is an average player, let's, you know, I'm not saying the great players, but anybody who is an average player who maybe isn't as great as Legion, you, I think you're effectively ha- handing them a DQ. Yeah, I mean, I and was that the choice? Wh- wh- what? That, that would be my question was the choice. OK, if you don't hand in if they don't hand in their list by this time we're either going to DQ them or we're going to do this, this list thing. So at least they can still play. Um, I, I don't like that. It was all about the one faction. That's my faction that I love um, as a, as a joke, uh, quote unquote, I like Tim's idea where, you know, if they at least pick like something somewhat competitive and then like randomized it from every faction and just said okay we're gonna randomize your list out of the four factions and you have uh you know uh you have the bus list or you have the triple spider droid list or you know what i mean or something at least halfway competitive yeah i mean like uh there's definitely there's there's three of the lists that are there's three i'm just uh doing some there are eight ion snow troopers in these lists um and three right. empire lists like i just it, it's kind of like there's definitely like a large handicap here um and i don't know i i'm i'm with you in that like i definitely would prefer to see people like be giving a warning and then like a 24 hour turnaround period and like don't release everyone's lists and but give them 24 hours and if they still haven't gotten it to you then like just DQ them it's like not a big deal you know they clearly weren't yeah um in we had like i don't know three weeks to put together lists ish plenty plenty of time it would there be. was there was there was <laughs> definitely enough time to put together lists um you know and if, if people aren't invested just just DQ them like I, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to me to to do that. Um, and instead, we get this like kind of weird thing where it's like, oh, empire is bad, so we're giving people empire lists as like a punishment. I don't know. It just doesn't feel good to me. Um, the, but again, I might be making more out of it than I don't think so. I might uh, listen. And Tim, I'll let you go in a second. Again, uh, mine, I hate that they're doing that with the Empire. Like, that sucks, and it really, like, perpetuates that whole thing, which I don't think Empire is S-tier, but I I think there's some definite A-lists, especially with Vader versus Speed. There's there's a lot of A-lists out there that just need to get played more, so I don't like that. But I I just, again, I'm going to go back to that, like, it's either all a joke or none of it is. Like, you guys, you got to decide. Like, this is a serious tournament that we take serious, and we're, we're trying to push forward the competitive 
uh, uh, version of this game or it's a fun tournament and we're going to make jokes and have a good time like that that it's one or the other I, I don't think it can be both a and I say this in a way because um, it, it, what I mean by that is that if you're trying to make invader league legitimate right and say hey this is a legitimate legitimate term tournament where the best of the best come to play and throw down but we're going to make a joke of it at the same time well now i don't take it serious at all go ahead Tim. sorry well so i was gonna say so this is a conversation that is throw, like, throwing me back like a honest war gamer uh rob and he's a aos streamer and player but he had sort of a whole stream kind of similar to this discussion uh, just a few weeks back where it was talking about um, sort of tournaments, how much you pay for tournaments and how you're treated tournaments and stuff. And his thing was, is that you need to accept for tournaments or like no tournaments. Are you going to the tournament? Is it a casual tournament? Are you just joking around, whatever, pay for whatever, or are you going to a tournament and it's like very cutthroat and get your list in on time or you're not coming um and like one of his guests was talking about how poker tournaments if you go you expect a certain amount of professionalism and if you don't mm -hmm. meet that you you can't play yep. um and i'm pretty neutral i on this whole thing but i i am sort of analogizing to that where it's um like i personally am a pretty competitive player and want things to be pretty sort of professional and whatever but a few jokes here and there as long as they're not hurting anyone is um fine and i think the the point of contention here is is our is the joke hurting people too much basically i think is the sure. um end of the day the question yeah i would and, agree with that yeah so i, I would yeah and I, I think it's an open question I, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to claim to know the answer. Um, and I, I'm not an empire player, so I have no yeah. say in whether it's too much of a joke or not. Yeah. I, I, I think it is too much of a joke um, because we're already, again, to go back to Mike's point, right? Like we're already struggling with folks you know, messaging us and going, Hey, is, is empire really that bad? Like, I, I, you know, you got, I heard you guys talking, is it really that bad? And I'm like, it's not great, but I think there's some things with like bursts of speed and, and some things that could potentially be good. I said, the other thing that's happening is, and I don't know about the invader league list, but like the tournaments we've seen, no one's been taking like legitimate, what, what the, four with Kyle was here with the four of us would go oh yeah that's definitely a competitive list like the Vader lat lists were kind of not really super competitive it was an interesting idea but not like a hyper competitive list and so it, it, you know I, I just hate that now that's going to go that's going to perpetuate that even further and and maybe push people to be like well I only wanted to play Empire if it's not good then I, I don't know what I'm doing here you know and I, I think that's kind of sad and I think the root of this problem is, is that like, as we've admitted, like empire is in a bad space right now. And hopefully with the next RNG and points updates, it's not. Yep. And then that kind of solves this whole problem. Yeah. I definitely <laughs> think like there's um, that's definitely a piece to it. Yeah. I think uh, to me, this feels like a little bit kick them while they're down, uh, I don't, you know, um, type of thing. And maybe people don't actually care um and and i actually i hope that's the case because i don't want to see people feel like they're alienated from the game for like what faction they play or whatever but um yeah i uh, and and i and i actually i do think they're in a better spot than than we give them credit for it generally um, yeah well I, okay as someone who i mean i dabble in rebels uh, dabble is a strong word because i've done it like maybe once or twice but like i exclusively play empire and when i heard about this it, it kind of feels bad like i was just like well oh like i you know i don't know how to describe it other than like i was just like well that's kind of sucks <laughs> you know that was the only thing that kind of came to my mind and and i'm been trying to think about it and understand but it's yeah it's because the thing i love 
Um, and the thing I love playing and the only thing I really love playing, I, I don't connect to, to any of the other, uh, any of the other factions um, on any level. And so it's kind of like people are, are making fun of the thing I love and giving it out as a punishment. And that's kind of, I don't know, that doesn't feel great. But yeah. that's, but that's me, you know, and I'm sure I, I don't know, you know, I think a lot of people who play uh, Empire who maybe aren't as competitive and don't have their finger on the pulse of the competitive, this will never affect them, right? And they just, they'll never know and they don't care and it's fine, right? And I'm sure a lot of people who play Stormtide, and I'm using that as an example of like a fun way to play the game or, or play, or play Skirmish, right? This is, they, they're not going to care. This isn't a big deal, but I, I, I think it's just more of a like a yellow flag right like hey like warning uh we gotta be careful of this type of stuff because it can it's not helping the issue and people's feelings right now right like i think empire players reach out to me a lot because i'm an empire player and they we connect and and they you know a lot of them are like I don't think Empire is that bad. Like, I think, what about this list? You know, like they're always, we're, we're always sharing lists and trying to like figure out how we can make Empire better. And, and so for like a, the quote unquote competitive community to kind of like throw it under the bus as a joke. Um, I don't know. It doesn't feel great. But again, that could just be an oversensitivity. It's not like, listen, let's be clear. I'm not like after this podcast, I'm probably not going to think about it anymore, but in reality right it's not like my house is on fire it's just it's just a, a slightly like oh yeah that doesn't that doesn't feel so so good type of type of situation that's all i mean i've played empire for one tournament and then ended up getting top four top two or something so yay <laughs> what'd you what'd you play uh, i was palp and it was a palp list. It was the the year that ladder league or the season ladder league decided to do only force users. You had to have a force user, which meant that palp got really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pal, it well, turns out palp's pretty good in that situation. And, and and here's something I'm gonna I'll say to all our listeners, and this is like people who reach out to me about Empire lists. It's the same gauntlet I throw them. Is come up with something that's truly competitive. Like most of the time when I see stuff, when people share their empire lists, it's like, I call them kitchen sink lists. It's almost like my Highlander list that I took. Like, it's just like, well, I'm going to throw in a dash of speeder bike and, and, you know, a sprinkle of ATST. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You got a lot going on in this list. Like you need to focus up. Um, but yeah, I, I challenge anyone to come up with a truly competitive uh empire list and and show the world what you know what the empire is capable of because i i believe like i said i don't i don't know that they're s tier but i i definitely think there's some a lists in there that that could be really really good and could be surprising you know and i think vader i think vader lists are are in there i i really think there's a place for callus vader um i'm gonna keep pushing that because i think that one's really good i think a vader bosk especially with vader burst of speed uh could be really really good um yeah so i think there's a lot of cool options out there yeah um i don't want to be the dead horse here so i think we, we should probably yeah move on but uh, <laughs> I, th- oh, yeah, I think was... we've, I think we've said what there is to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah and yeah, yeah. you know, um, so I'm looking forward to the rest of Invader League. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna be an interesting one. Um, are there any, are there any standouts that you guys, uh, standout lists that you guys think are are like meta meta killers that are able to take down the tournament? Uh, well, hopefully my own, my hopefully my own list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Um, there you go. Yeah, I don't know about. I don't know. I'm interested to see. I because I, I think we do a lot of theory crafting, right? Yeah, when new yeah. when new units come out, so I'm really I'm interested to see how the how the spider droids do in in actuality on the table, um, and see how people play them. 
uh, I am interested to see. I, I don't know the makeup of the eleven Empire lists, um, besides the the one that was given to Luke. Um, you know, I'm really I'm really excited to see what comes out of the Empire and how far Empire can make it. And I I hope that I hope that they can make it a ways. You know, some depth into the tournament to just show that hey, you know what, it's still okay. Empire is still pretty good. I don't know. Other than that. Force seeing that many force users is really exciting, actually. Um, I yeah, like I, I really want to go back and look and see how many force users have been in previous Invader Leagues because I feel like this is a high number. Yeah. It'd be great to see a force user take the whole thing. That would be nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm trying to think of has, has a force user ever won Invader League? Was there a Pelp list? maybe that one or uh, operative loop i mean last season was rex star yep the season before that was rex star right right yeah it was rex star <laughs> um the season before that i think was kyle's season four run with boss Osk. yeah um season three was was that Luke Luke's season? No, season three was was Kyle's run. Season four was uh, season four. Oh, was, season was, four was lost. It was like the not lost, but I think that was the the year. Uh, El, did Ellis win that one? I think he might have. Hmm. And that actually might have been, yeah, he did win that one. I think he might have been playing Dooku. Uh, so uh, I may. Yeah. Yeah. I, I took a quick flip through the list because there was one I was interested in. So Droid's Rule has an interesting list that it might be a little bit anti meta because he's got Rebel Officer Sabine with Electro Grappling Line and Darksaber. R2, two vets, two medium blasters with all heavies. And then. Clan Ren, and then two Wookiee Warriors with bowcasters and whatever. But I think there's enough meat in the the melee there to deal with sort of a Wookiee charge. And also, like, explosions plus grappling line can tie down a blob of Wookiees decently. So that kind of thing might be... Because I, I think the pretty defining list for this year will be a bunch of Wookiees charging in your face. <laughs> so... I have mixed feelings about this <laughs> because I think you're right. I think this 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 year is all going to be about can you kill the Wookiees before the Wookiees kill you, right? And um, Wookiees don't really care about objectives a ton. They just kind of run you over. Like mm-hmm. they, if they if they beat you, they generally run you. Over. They're, um, they're a lot like Tauntauns. Yeah, very much so. Except they're like way better in melee than Tom. Yes. Oh yeah. <laughs> like oh yeah. So much better. Um, and I'd argue they're probably they're better than sh- at shooting. I think just from a versatility standpoint, Tauntauns are good at like consistent chip damage. Um, Wookies are good at just like killing things. Um, and I don't love that we've moved to like a, I think people are calling it W key lists. Um, where you just kind of like put like five or six melee units or, or fast moving units into a list and just try and run your opponent over that to me is super uninteresting. Um, but it feels like where we are. Yeah. I think it's uh, the problem is it's the answer to rec star, right? Like the pendulum swings, where you had a gun line that was just like sitting back and going, yeah, all right, I'm just going to shoot you. It's just like, and then the pendulum went the other way and everyone's like, all right, well, I'm just going to then have these like multi-wound units that are just going to run your lines over. And there's my answer to that. Right. And it just, and I, it'll be interesting to see how the pendulum goes the other way. Right. And it swings back. And it's, so- it's, it's funny because you just described the thought analysis that I went through when I decided on my list. I was like, yeah. so if the answer to Rex star is Wookiees, how do I fix that? Right. You know what I can do? 
I'm just going to put Wookiees in Rexstar. <laughs> you know? If I become my enemy, if I become my the enemy yeah. while still being myself, it's probably great, right? Then what uh, are they going to do? <laughs> yeah, you know, like if I can be me and them at the same time, you know, like how, with how, the how, how could thoughts. they possibly win? You know, um, yeah, that's kind of that's that's pretty much where I ended up. Um, love it. So. I love it. <laughs> uh yeah because i mean like i don't know three yeah. wookies with offensive push and tenacity like i'm probably going to be able to kill one or two melee units on the way in with the rest of the list so like we'll be on an even playing field by the time you get there uh, yeah and listen i would just say anybody listening who 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 is at any point in time whether it was in the past or in today or in the future like you're if you're worried about the meta and it's upsetting you i i just say give it another month or two and it'll be different because that's just how it's been I, working like we had we are in or were in an armor meta as of a week ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah. that's already seems to be on the downward trend yep. so yeah it's it is a interesting thing about a game with releases all the time is if you don't like a meta wait a little while and it yep. probably will change yep. yeah for sure i i personally would like it to like stagnate a little bit more but um just from like i would like to kind of see it shake play out play completely out in a given meta as opposed to like we just get a new update but that's fine i it's not a yeah. bad thing that we get new units all the time. Uh, yeah i think i think the, the the problem with this game not problem let me the the thing that makes this game the way it is is with like 40k what's what's how, how often are the the rules are, it's like every what couple of years that the rules end up changing or they do an update or something you know yeah well like warhammer aos and 40k you get it like a, a fully rewrite every three years but yeah. also you get like basically you get a new army like every six months right like you sort of get something that could shake up the meta every, even like three months, but like usually like every six months, there's a pretty substantial or a pretty substantial possibility of something the meta changing. Now, generally like the major points of the game change every three years no. because that's when there's a full rewrite, but um, you can have, like we have a unit every month. They'll have an army every six months. Yeah, right, and and I guess that's like with for us we have so far so far we've had a points change slash errata every year roughly right and and so that's it's a it's a quicker turnaround on the meta and like quicker adjustments to things that are they see as wrong you know well and it's also a result of just the IP because there's yep. there is sort of four natural factions that are pretty yeah. obvious in the IP and you, and they're sort of like, you can do more than that, but you, you're kind of stuck into four to like max. You could probably get eight total yeah. armies completely. Right. So more or less, yeah, Mike, Mike's shaking his head, but well, the I point- mean, I'm thinking like, you know, you got first order, you got resistance, you've got Chiss ascendancy, you've got Yuzong Fong. Like there's just, there's a ton but but for people the 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 images that are on store shelves that are going to make people buy stuff is limited no doubt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but but where it's warhammer because the i they make their own ip and can do whatever they want with it they can make as many armies as they want yeah. so it's it's sort of a result of a little bit of a result of the ip that you're in as well as just smaller company that you can make units at a time not armies so you have to have a different release schedule because of it yeah yeah, it's interesting. That's all I got, bud. Okay. Are we are we done here? Is that what you're saying? I think so. Okay. Sounds good. Well, I think uh, I think we had a lot of good conversations today. Um, you know, we got to hear uh, about uh, Tim's conclusion to his skirmish tournament. Congratulations! Um, Thank you. We we got to talk about Invader League and um, the. Uh, all the all the crazy stuff going on with that and uh we got to talk about empire a little bit so it's a good day yeah yeah that was a good Ooh. day for me i like talking yeah. empire yeah 
Um, so Tim, before we go, do you want to just uh, hit your your socials real quick? Oh yeah, uh, find me on the Fifth Trooper blog where I write once a month on Discord at Timbo or on Twitch, Timbo eight seven zero zero. And when you're listening to this, if you haven't seen, there will be a game on there between uh, Dashes and Imperial Sympathizer, which will be a game from Invader League Seven. Awesome. Yeah, we'll we'll see how that goes. That that is tomorrow night for me. And um, I mean, my Wookiees better they better just come come to come to fight. You know, um, yeah, it'll be the the debut debut. Uh, roll out for for that list um <laughs> i'm a little nervous about it to be honest you should be. <laughs> so i get it yeah um cool well i'm looking forward to that uh i guess uh we are the notorious scoundrels i'm mike i'm jay i'm tim Bo. <laughs> stay fresh cheese bags